And I remember literally staring at myself in the mirror every day, picking myself apart and crying myself to sleep because I did not like what I saw. And it makes me emotional because since being more intentional with my relationship with God, and again, that going hand in hand with the relationship that I have with myself, I can honestly say that I am more secure and confident in who I am. But I say that to say that I did not get to this place without facing myself and truly going through the process of changing from the inside out. Ken Folk, what is good? It's your girl Ken and I welcome you to another episode of the Keys and Seeds podcast. If this is your first time here, my name is Kendall and I share revelations I received from the Holy Spirit as well as therapy that are helping me on my journey of growing spiritually as well as emotionally and prayerfully is able to help someone else. And so if there's content that interests you or if you're blessed by something that I share in this episode or any other episode or my content, Please engage and stick around now. Without further ado, let's get in to a new episode. I share with you all that I recently cut my hair, which is a pretty big deal because I went from sitting on it to it now being at my shoulders. And I shared in that episode that I cut my hair because I've been undergoing a lot of change like on the inside like I've been going through a lot of interchange and I know that it's been itching to be communicated on the outside and up until I cut my hair I had been looking at myself in the mirror as I've been going through all this change. Like physically, I don't like what I see. And I just felt like I needed something new. I needed something different. And literally, but also figuratively, spiritually, I felt like a huge weight was cut off through me cutting my hair. And I also shared in the previous episode that I wanted to do an episode about changing from the inside out. And so that is what this episode is about. So with that said, the key lesson that I want you all to walk away from this episode with is focus more on that sounded weird. Focus more on the inside than the outer. For the inner is more important. But when you focus on the inner, know that it inevitably impacts the outer. And so with that said, the scripture for this episode the anchor scripture, even though I'm going to share a few scriptures, is coming from 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, and it reads, But the Lord said to Samuel, Don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. As of recently, I've been more in a place of focusing more on the inner because I had got to a place in my life where I realized that I wasn't facing myself and the opposite of facing myself was running from myself. And I had got to a place in my life where I realized that One, I realized that I was running from myself and I didn't know that I was running from myself. But I also realized that I couldn't continue to keep running from myself, especially if I wanted to get to where I knew that I wanted to be. Right. And 
I say that I didn't know that I was running from myself because I'm a recovering people pleaser. And so I more recently have gotten to a place of realizing that I've been people pleasing and I've been moving through life not showing up as my authentic self because I haven't always known who my authentic self is and because I've grown up in survival mode essentially morphing or attempting to morph myself into a version of myself that I felt I needed to be in order to get my needs met the version of myself that I felt that I needed to be in order to be liked or accepted by my peers, right? But the funny thing about God is I always knew that I was different. And it was always an inner knowing, but it was not subconscious, not conscious, but like right under the surface of my conscious mind. And it wasn't until I had got to a place in my life where I realized that I was insane. Because what is the definition of insanity? It's doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results, right? And ironically, I had got to that place in my life in 2020. And we all know what happened in 2020, right? And so... This place that I've been in as far as truly facing myself and learning who I am and realizing that I can't effectively be on this journey without a deeper relationship and a more intentional relationship with God. I don't even know where I was going with that point. (laughs) I'm like, what did I say before that? Um, I say all of that to say that more recently, as I've been in a more intentional place of growing with God, it goes hand in hand with me growing with myself, right? And when I was younger, like, I I can recall being told how pretty I was or how beautiful I was and also like the main thing with my hair is I felt like that was a huge part of my identity like oh you have such long pretty hair you should model long hair this pretty this long hair that beautiful that right I don't ever recall as a kid being reaffirmed or poured into based on who I truly was as a person right and so I remember when I was younger I definitely was caught up in vanity but as I got older you know being bullied and not truly knowing who I was right I had an unstable sense of self and I had very low self-esteem And I compared myself to others. And I remember literally staring at myself in the mirror every day, picking myself apart and crying myself to sleep because I did not like what I saw. And it makes me emotional because since being more intentional with my relationship with God, And again, that going hand in hand with the relationship that I have with myself, I can honestly say that I am more secure and confident in who I am. But I say that to say that I did not get to this place without facing myself and truly going through the process of changing from the inside out, right? And so with that said, It's easy for us as humans to focus on the outside, but I really just want to provide some encouragement to focus more on the inside because, again, that's what's more important. 
when you take off the makeup, when you take off the wigs, when you ain't got a haircut, a fresh line up, right? God forbid you have a house fire and or you're down to your last and you don't you don't got the clothes and the bags and whatever it is you feel like makes you you, right? At the end of the day, you have to sit with who you are as a person. Who you are as a person shows up in the relationship that you have with yourself, with God, and everyone else, in everything else, because we also have a relationship with things and not just people, right? But with that said, I just have a few points um, that I want to share and some scriptures to go along with those points. And then I'm going to be out your way. I don't imagine this episode being too, too long. But again, this was just on my heart to share and talk about. And so the first point is uh, we cannot hide who we are from God you can lie to yourself you can lie to everybody else but you can't lie to God God is the one who created us so it's delusional really (laughs) to think that we can hide who we truly are from God and I think to some extent We don't even realize that we aren't even showing up as our full self with God. Or at least I can speak for myself. I realized that as I first was growing in my relationship with God, that I wasn't being my full self because I've gone a great deal of my life not showing up as my full self in other relationships with people because I felt as if it wasn't safe for me to. Right. Mind you, I had to morph into versions of myself that I felt like I needed to be in order to survive, in order to get my needs met. And then it also trickled into because I'm rejecting parts of myself out of survival. I'm still rejecting parts of myself when approaching new relationships with people because I'm thinking that they're also going to reject those same parts of myself that have already been rejected, right? And so when we approach God with certain mind frames, with certain mindsets, right? Me just speaking for myself, I didn't realize until recently that I was still hiding parts of who I was with God. And it wasn't until I truly locked in in a secret place And I realized I can just be myself with God. And that literally looked like me crying out to God because I'm now realizing that I don't even know who I am. It wasn't until I got to that point where God showed me who I truly am and who he is. God is not interested in having a fake or surface level relationship with us. And so with that said, the scripture that I have for this is for this point is Matthew 23, verse 25 through 30. I mean, 29, Matthew 23, verses 25 through 29. Hypocrites, for you are so careful to clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you are filthy, full of greed and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee. First wash the inside of the cup in the dish and then the outside will become clean too. The context of this scripture is God speaking to the religious people during that time and letting them know like, yo, you might be out here following all these rules and regulations and got some other people fooled because you look great on paper, but I can see your heart. I can see who you really are. And so while you're out here focused more on the outside of the cup being clean, you should focus more on the inside of the cup being clean. Okay. (laughs) And so I really just want that point in that scripture to be encouragement to you all to focus again more on the inside than the outside because 
a lot of people may only see the outside, but God sees the inside. And those who are truly walking with God, they also see the inside to some extent. And I would hate for other people to see you better than you see yourself. And that's also one of the other points that I have, (laughs) which is you should discern who you are before and better than others can. And the scripture that I have for that is Hebrews 12, 1 through 3 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. This is the scripture that I was reminded of when I was sharing that I cut my hair. I literally felt like a weight was stripped of me, right? You cannot run at the pace that you are meant to run at if you are holding on to dead weight. And a lot of the dead weight that we hold on to are those limiting beliefs, those toxic behaviors that we have within us, that pride. Let's wake it up. (laughs) There's so much that a lot of us are still holding on to and dealing with as far as baggage and it's slowing us down. But a lot of us don't know what that baggage is until we take the time to truly sit with ourselves and do the inner work. Or some of us know the baggage that we have, but we're avoiding doing the inner work. And I don't want to say any of this or come from a place of doing the inner work is easy because it's not. But it's easy when you know that you're doing it with God. It's easier when you know that you're doing it with God. God will never leave us nor forsake us as long as you truly lock in with God and you spend time in the secret place with him because he's going to show you who you are either way right when you spend time in the secret place with God he's going to show you you but he's showing you you as a result of who he is And so God is not going to show you you without walking you through what it is he wants you to be in the process of changing. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Um, (laughs) Moving on to one, two, three more points that I just have. It's easy to mask who you are on the inside with the outer, but the outer won't take you as far eventually you'll have to face the truth and a scripture I have for that is Proverbs 31 and 30 and it says charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised looks are still important right we live in a society today where first impressions matter and we have to show up in the world meeting people from what we're met with at the eye, right? So I don't want to sit here and say that our appearance physically does not matter because we all know that it does, right? However, even though your appearance may be what gets you in the door, your appearance alone is not what's going to keep you in the room, in the relationship, wherever right and then too y'all like beauty is fleeting right like what happened if you get into an accident or god forbid you know what i mean like your face get burned or you getting up in old old age and right like we really cannot place our worth and our value in these temporary surface level things right fellas 
the way that woman look is not going to raise your child. You got a headache in every relationship that you're in because you're choosing the woman that you're with based on solely what she looks like. And women, we got this bad too. (laughs) We have to truly discern the fruit that people bear. We have to truly discern who people are. It's easy to mask who you are on the inside with the outside, but we all know it's a whole lot of people out here that are attractive physically, attractive to the eye, but the moment they open their mouth, baby, (laughs) it's like you fine until you open your mouth, (laughs) right? But moving on (laughs) because I really don't want this to be too long. When you focus more on the inner, and this is my next point, you become more secure in who you are. And how you feel on the inside will inevitably be communicated on the outside. I'm reminded of the phrase, when you look good, you feel good. But I really feel like it's vice versa. It's a whole lot of people who are literally wearing on the outside how they feel about themselves on the inside. And you can tell. When you truly care about who you are as a person, you're going to care about who you are and the way in which you show up in this world in totality. And so when you care and you focus on the inner, the outside will inevitably be influenced. And with that, I'm reminded of the scripture, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 3 through 4. And it says, your beauty should not come from outward adornments, such as Braided hair, such as, I think I said that wrong, such as braided hair and the wearing of gold jewelry and fine clothes. Instead, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of a, uh, which is of great worth in God's sight. And to wrap up, I somewhat already spoke on this next point that I wrote down, but when you focus more on the inner You then gain more wisdom in choosing who slash what's for you and you repel who slash what's not for you. I believe a lot of problems that I see people have about complaining about the relationships that they have or the things that they're attracting or entertain, I believe a lot of that would change if more of us took more time to sit with ourselves. 